Good morning, everyone. For those of you who I've not met, and there's not many, I'm Dolly Duffy, the executive director of your Notre Dame Alumni Association. And it's a privilege to be here. But I have to, I have to tell you, I, I've met my match. Absolutely. Because General Fenton, I love the fact that you are still hugging everyone and talking to everyone. That's right up my alley, and you actually do it better. Um, um, I, I particularly love being in this room for this event and with this um, intimate crowd. Normally, we have a much bigger dinner and uh, when our board is in, but the Fentons couldn't make it then, and we were going to do whatever it took to make sure that we got to give the Corby Award to this deserving recipient. So this is a smaller event, and uh, just some, some great family friends, people that matter to the Fentons, and so we're really, really glad to have you here. Um, I want to say one thing, right? I, we're all here, and we adore uh, the Fentons, right? And, um, and especially General Fenton. And one of the things that dawned on me is that oftentimes we don't share the process for how we choose the Corby Award. And so I thought I would tell you that um, the, it's a, an alumni association award, but it's the highest award, military award, the university gives. And so we take in nominations and we let those nominations sit for, for as, as, up to three years. So imagine three years worth of nominees to go through. And the internal activities committee of the board goes through them, and it's a, it's a fascinating process. And they narrow it down and narrow it down, and then they pick a candidate. And so General Fenton was the unanimous um, candidate for them to move on to the full board, and it was a unanimous decision by the board of the Alumni Association that General Fenton should receive this award this year. So we're, we're really, really excited about that. So now I'm going to call up the president-elect of our board, Amy Porter, to do the invocation. And after that, we'll have din or dinner. You can tell I'm used to being at dinners. Um, and I've also had a mimosa. So um, and we'll, uh, we'll have uh, breakfast, and then we'll present the award after. Amy? Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here with you all on this beautiful fall morning. We could not have asked for better weather today. Now, as is our tradition at the University of Notre Dame, let us begin our gathering by praying together with open hearts. Loving and merciful God, we ask for your abundant blessing upon us as we gather this morning for the 2023 Corby Award celebration. We thank you for the sacrifice and dedication of your loyal son of Notre Dame, Brian P. Fenton, in his service to our nation. We are inspired by our brothers like Reverend William Corby and Brian Fenton, who have dedicated their lives to military service. We are reminded of our own responsibility to be forces for good in this world and to do so in service of our communities. We ask that you guide and support us as we uphold this tremendous responsibility. As we begin this gathering, we give thanks for the opportunity to gather here in person. May our time on this beloved campus nourish the bonds of friendship and recharge our efforts to work together as a force for good. May we travel home safely and in good health and with an Irish win. We ask all this through the intercession of Our Lady Notre Dame. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome to our Corby Award presentation. My name is Liz Trantowski, and I have the privilege to serve as the president of the Alumni Association Board. Established in 1985, the Reverend William Corby CSC Award is conferred upon an alumnus or alumna, living or deceased, who has distinguished himself or herself in military service. The award is presented in honor of Notre Dame's third president, who was a celebrated Civil War chaplain. Today we recognize General Brian Fenton, who is acclaimed not only for his extraordinary military service record, but also for his profound commitment to humanitarian service. Brian is a native of Knoxville, Tennessee, and he grew up cheering for the Fighting Irish. Much of his enthusiasm for Notre Dame came from his paternal grandparents, who emigrated from Ireland and settled in a largely Irish neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As a student at Notre Dame, Brian joined the Army ROTC. 
He credits his first-rate training in the ROTC program to his outstanding instructors, including his friend and mentor, Lieutenant Colonel Doug Hemphill. This experience was complemented by Brian's work as a student manager, ultimately serving as a senior manager for the football team under Coach Lou Holtz. Coach Holtz shared with Brian the lessons he had learned during his own time in the Army and emphasized the enormous responsibility of serving our nation. In 1987, Brian graduated from Notre Dame with a bachelor's degree in business administration and was commissioned as an Army Second Lieutenant. A career Special Forces officer, Brian's sterling military record of more than 35 years is extensive. He began his career in Germany, witnessing the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. Four years later, he completed Special Forces training. Since then, Brian has worked around the world at the center of peacekeeping and counterterrorism operations to defend democracy. He goes where he is needed and called to serve, along with his highly trained and dedicated fellow soldiers, from South America to Africa to South Asia to the Middle East, totaling more than 50 countries. Last year, General Fenton assumed command of the U.S. Special Operations Command headquartered at MacDill Air Force Base in Florida. He is only the second four-star U.S. military officer to graduate from Notre Dame. Many of us know of the famous image of Father Corby standing atop a boulder, offering absolution to the 530 men of the renowned Irish Brigade on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg in July of 1863. By the time Father Corby made this remarkable gesture, he had already accompanied hundreds of soldiers on the devastating battles of Antietam, Fredericksburg, and Chancellorsville. In doing so, he earned their respect and gratitude. As one historian observed, Father's, Father Corby's absolution at Gettysburg was representative in a life of devotion to his faith and to the people he served. Similarly, General Fenton's exemplary military career and awards are amplified by his deep concern and respect for others manifested in his humanitarian service. Brian's friends and colleagues noted, he serves his country from the wounded to the healthiest and strongest Army Rangers and Special Forces, and he serves them humbly. Brian is known as the consummate soldier's soldier. On behalf of the Notre Dame Alumni Association, please join me in welcoming and congratulating this year's winner of the Reverend William Corby CSC Award, a true servant leader and devoted son of Notre Dame, General Brian Fenton. Save all that clapping for the Irish win. Okay, I'm gonna let you sit down. When we get, we get uh, a win today, I expect to see a whole bunch of folks doing that over and over again. Thank you. Hey, uh, uh, Liz, thank, thank you uh, for that introduction and thank you for what you do for this university and as you and the Alumni Association, uh, along with Dolly and the whole team watch over this place. We're, we're very grateful, very honored, and uh, we're very lucky and blessed to have you at, at the helm. Thank you uh, for that. And. Um, Thank you, the Alumni Association, uh, for, for this opportunity uh, and this honor today. I'm extremely, I was shocked, Dolly could tell you I was shocked when I got a call uh, about this and uh, actually said, crank call, crank call. And uh, she, as we know, Dolly, persisted through all of my uh, jokes and, and told me about this and I, I'm just really grateful, honored and, uh, appreciative uh, to, to be thought of this way and a chance to come back here and be with everybody. And uh, thanks to the whole Alumni Association for what you do each and every day, take care of this university and watching over it, a very blessed place. Uh, I'd also like to thank everybody who put this uh, together. Uh, we, we talk about uh, many events and what Notre Dame's doing this weekend and, do, and does many, many weekends. It takes a, a team of teams to put it all together. So. I don't know if everybody here uh, or others on the outside can hear my voice, but just Dolly and team and Liz, tell, tell everybody thank you for this. With all that's going on today, to stop for a moment in time and, and do this. One, it takes a lot of work, a lot of planning, and a lot of uh, coordination, and we're very grateful for that. And two, it, it's also an absolute honor. Just please tell them thank you uh, for setting this up. I will uh, 
uh, really begin by, by being grateful that in that uh, intro, Liz didn't read my grade point average. Um, I have roommates and great friends that are here that knew when I was on this campus that, that it was stellar. And uh, other, I'm just glad it wasn't put out there in public. Uh, so I was sweating it out here, probably more than any deployment I've ever done in Afghanistan, <laughs> frankly. And I was really, uh, you know, thinking as Liz was doing that, that most speakers don't need a long introduction. They need a rapid conclusion. And so I'll try to fulfill my, my part of that uh, today as I get through this. Hey, uh, I, I'm uh, accepting this award and any honors that go with it on behalf of your military uh, in total. Almost 2 million folks who serve in uniform and a total component of active duty reserve National Guard and our civilian teammates uh, that uh, I just happen to be one team, part of that team that represented today. As Notre Dame uh, says, thank you for military service. So I, I accept it on behalf of all them. And in particular, the 70,000 uh, men and women in your nation's Special Operations Command, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and most recently, Space Force teammates that make up a really incredible force. And I think as we talked yesterday, uh, in a number of forms, just the, the best in the history of mankind and humankind. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about your military in terms of what we are ready to do for this nation and how we defend it each and every day. Um, I know you're proud of it. I just want to reinforce that. Uh, they, they are the best. Uh, they will continue to be the best. And they're really proud to serve this nation and uh, represent you wherever they are. And in fact, right now, you have, for Special Operations Command, 6,000 of our teammates, uh, men and women, deployed in 80 countries around the globe doing just that very thing. Um, in 80 different places, meeting those nations where they are and really representing on any given day what we call the three Ds. First, this nation's defense, because they show up in uniform. Second, um, diplomacy, because our folks in uniform are also diplomats for this nation and for what we all stand for and what you all represent, as you said here today, and where you are in your communities and uh, your professions. And third, development, because your military would tell you any time that they're out there, everybody wants to be like the United States. Uh, whether they say it in public or whether they say it in private, uh, this, this nation is still uh, revered and um, to be emulated by any nation that's out there. And your military is really proud to do that for everybody uh, each and every day. And those teammates that I'm a part of, and I have some teammates with me here in the room that uh, were part of <clears throat> getting us here, I think last night, Sarah Liebscher said it takes a village to get an idiot, that's me, uh, in places. And we've got great teammates that are here. And thank you for letting them be part of this today because uh, they, they also serve right alongside the SOCOM family and their great teammates as well. And their families appreciate uh, an opportunity to be here today. Before I dive in any further, I just want to thank a whole bunch of folks. Um, first, my family, my dad, my brother here today. Um, one of the reasons I'm, I'm even standing uh, here uh, Don, Nora, and Cece, my lovely uh, family, uh, bride and two daughters uh, that I'm afraid to look at right now because they wonder why I didn't go out with them last night and I <laughs> did the walk of shame to come back into Morrison at 10 o'clock last night to get ready for this. My ND family, I got friends and roommates and teammates and uh, incredible folks that we've come to know over years and years starting with uh, Colonel Doug Hemp and Lon Hemphill here, the Dukemans, Muffin and Lindsay, Sully, uh, the Murney family, uh, so many others that, that are here that I've known for, for many, many years, just uh, great, great teammates. And uh, the extended Notre Dame family, that means everybody in this room. Um, just thank you, thanks for, for coming today. Uh, Gallo, uh, who I've known, uh, this, this, just in case you, uh, folks don't really know the truth, this, this was, our version of Rudy. This was the 1980s Rudy right here. Um, and uh, everybody who knows him knows that. And Coach Holtz uh, reveres this guy. And we're just glad he came today because there's a lot going on on this campus. And one of those is Holtz's heroes. And Tommy's the, one of the directors of that. And uh, he's missing that to be over here. And we're very grateful. And the board, thank you very much as well. Will from the ROTC program. Just many, many cast. Bill, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for, for being here today. You could be a lot of other places. But we're really glad, glad you came. And our military family, Jen Stewart and Laura, who I got to know in that variety, and 
it's a, a dual service, uh, both uh, our Department of Defense and Notre Dame. So Laura, thanks. And Jen, my teammate for a long time with the Secretary of Defense, the Chief of Staff of the entire Department of Defense sits right there, uh, former, I'll call her, because she's smiling if I say former. But uh, longtime teammates together, and we just we're grateful that, that everybody came. Thank you very, very much. Um, it's a tribute uh, to, to this university and its legacy of service. That, that is probably the guiding principle that all that know this university and what it stands for. Um, demonstrated as well by the former Corby Award winners, many of the names you know. I know Kathy Creighton, I know Admiral uh, Grady and many others, and they certainly stand for the greatness of military service and a legacy that makes Notre Dame a force for good in the world. And one that we all know very well if you've been part of this university in any way, shape, or form. And it's a phrase that was uh, used by President Soren, uh, our first uh, Father Soren president, that Notre Dame would be that force of good. It would be about service to the world and to the nation in any form. Diplomat, doctor, educator, uh, many other forces for good. Certainly judge. We had a Supreme Court judge uh, here uh, this weekend as well. But your military is one part of that service. And, very grateful to be standing before you today and just being able to talk a bit about it. What I'd like to do is just talk it through the prism of three folks, I think, that exemplify all that, that uh, many here know. Uh, incredible human beings that showed all of us what service means in their own way, shape, or form. And the first was uh, Father Corby, as Liz just mentioned, uh, who the award is named after. You know, fellow Notre Dame alum, uh, somebody who was the third president of the university, and was teaching here when the Union, uh, Civil War broke out. And when that happened, he did, uh, as Notre Dame is famous for, he didn't just sit on the sidelines. He jumped into the game. And he left Notre Dame to serve. He was an uh, Army chaplain for three years with the Irish Brigade of the Union Army, the original Fighting Irish. And he was right there at Antietam in some of the bloodiest battles of the American Civil War. That was the bloodiest. Uh, in our history, and he was there at Gettysburg as well when the tide of the war shifted. And he modeled courage and he modeled service and a life of service in, a, uh, in uniform and for this university. And he probably was the original manifestation of God, country, Notre Dame that we know very well at this university. And as on any piece of paraphernalia, you could get anywhere you want in the bookstore or throughout the university because that's who Notre Dame is. The second person I want to highlight this morning is one that may be lesser known to some, but very well known to a couple of us here, uh, Father Francis Sampson. Father Sampson was the chaplain for the ROTC detachment uh, when I was here with uh, uh, Doug and Lon uh, Hemphill and many other ROTC cadets at that time. Now, Father Sampson that I knew at that time would sit in the ROTC student lounge with a cigar. Probably not lit, I can't remember if it was. And he'd share stories with us as cadets about his life of service. And all I knew at the time was that he was a World War II vet. I didn't really absorb all the other pieces around him, but I came to, to, to know that he was, he was a pretty important guy. But I also know he was just a really cool priest who told a lot of stories and at times some off-color words, and we were like, right on, all right, Father, I like you. And he had some incredible stories. But what I didn't know was that he was uh, first, the very first recipient of the Corby Award in 1985. And I didn't know that he would probably be the closest I'd ever get to a real life Father Corby. Because like Father Corby, Father Samson was an ordained priest and a Notre Dame man. And when he entered, uh, when America entered World War II, he too didn't sit on the sidelines. He raised his hand to serve. And he went on to serve as an army chaplain in the famous 101st Airborne uh, Division, where he was known as the paratrooper padre. And <laughs> he, was, uh, he was right there on D-Day when the Allied forces landed. And he was also there at the Battle of the Bulge. What I didn't know is he spent time as a prisoner of war in Germany. I also didn't know he had a movie made about him and a book, but he did. And he had lots of things that uh, his cadets, he didn't share with us, he didn't need to. We knew we were in special company. Uh, we just didn't know how special he was. 
to include for that for battlefield bravery, he'd gotten the D Distinguished Service Cross, the DSC, which is our nation's second highest medal, right behind the Medal of Honor. So he modeled courage and a life of service in a way that was just swimming in it here at Notre Dame, and we didn't even know it. He probably was the first manifestation I really met and have thought about since is the old, what would you fight for? And the paratrooper Padre showed what that was. It was a legacy of service, service to Notre Dame, service to his nation, and really service to us cadets being in his presence. And the third and final person uh, I want to talk about was not a Notre Dame alum, but somebody who's really, really close to all of us, and that's Coach Holt, who we've had a chance uh, for many years to, to honor and be a part, but uh, we've, had, we've really uh, taken it big way this weekend with Gallo and Randy Kinder, and the teammates that have put together so many events for Coach throughout the campus and with the Alumni Association and many others. And I had a chance, as Liz mentioned, to work uh, right alongside him as one of his student assistants. And it was great to catch up with his, him this weekend, share stories, and, you know, to remind him that as he imparted so many things on all of us, first was his, his three, his motto, trust, love, and commitment, taking care of each other, trusting each other, and uh, certainly it's each and every day making sure that you, you loved and were committed as part of any team that you might be a part of. His other three rules that you can't forget if you've been part of his team are do the right thing, uh, always do your best, and show people you care. And those things extend, as he likes to say, beyond the four-year commitment anybody had here, take you for 40, 50, 60 years. And uh, he was an amazing and is amazing uh, teacher, mentor in that. But the thing that always struck me is every once in a while he'd walk by and we'd be on the sidelines, it'd be cold practice. He'd say something in his own mumble, Kevin, I got an MBA. I'd say, you're, you're a football coach. How do you have an MBA? Yeah, friend, you got an MBA. I'm, I'm made by Army. Made by Army, because he was a, a ROTC cadet at Kent State. And I, I don't think many of us knew that at the time. I certainly didn't, until he started to share these stories, because he knew I was in ROTC, and he knew I was headed in the service. And he said, you know, being in the service uh, taught me more about coaching and about humans than anything I've ever done in the coaching profession. And he would talk about the non-commissioned officers and those that we serve uh, with and, uh, and, and through even now, and uh, he, he, it meant a lot to him. It was uh, his way of saying that he was forged in something that was greater than, than just football. Um, and he would talk about it over and over. He was made by Army, and as a result, he thought he was a better person and certainly a better leader and coach. And he would talk about that service. And uh, we saw that as two things. Firstly, his commitment to our teams and our organization in this university as everyone knows, he loves more than life itself. But it was also a life of service that he talked to us about as we would have team meetings or things that uh, were, were in, in periods where we had a bit of a lull or a bit of a pause. And while his service might not have been on the battlefield, it was, as Douglas Mark Carter said, in the fields of friendly strife that uh, he showed uh, a life of service that's similar to what I've had the chance to, uh, to uh, be a part of in, in our military. And he also absolutely reminded us, and he just did it again today as we were over there for breakfast, that Notre Dame's got a long storied legacy of service, no matter how you do it. A doctor to a diplomat, a judge to a teacher, to a coach, uh, to a president, or just in the military. He didn't care. He just wanted you to do something that was bigger than yourself. And he'd also remind us that we're blessed here because of the lady on the dome, which he stands for and stands for service. And that uh, all you got to do is look in that direction, and you'll know why people come here. It's the very essence of this university's legacy of service. So I appreciate this opportunity and the honor to uh, accept the award, uh, again, on behalf of your military and your special operations command team that uh, is committed to that legacy of service and is inspired by everybody in this room and everyone you represent as our nation and our nation's population. <laughs> And I know that the legacy here is alive and well. Had the chance to do uh, a physical training with the cadets here on campus at 07 in the morning on Friday, and they crushed us, two of them right here. And uh, I, uh, I feel extremely optimistic about the future of not only Notre Dame, but this nation, because of those who continue to raise their hands and serve in uniform, 
and those who continue to raise their hands and serve out of uniform in any way, shape, or form for this nation and really by default for the world. So thank you uh, for all of that, and I very much appreciate the opportunity today. And I'll just end by saying may God bless our great country. May he watch over our men and women serving overseas or in any capacity. And may God continue to show his favor on Our Ladies University. Beat the buck, guys. Thank you. Dolly, I'm not sure why you asked me to make these remarks. Uh, uh, Brian gave the best benediction that I think anybody could give in his closing comments. My name is Doug Hemphill, and I have the great privilege of having been the person who commissioned Second Lieutenant Brian Fenton in 1987. I've been reminded of that a couple of times. And here's where it gets to be a problem. You said I had 90 seconds. <laughs> when I was in college, I sang with a rock and roll band, and people said I had a problem called microphone fever. Put a Doug in front of it, and he can't shut up. Well, <laughs> strap in. This, this might, take, might take a minute or two. Um, I didn't know Father Corby. Uh, I'm not that old. <laughs> I do fly his flag from the Irish Brigade at my tailgate. It's located this morning uh, around marker number 10 in the stadium parking lot, and you are all more than welcome to come over sometime after 3.30 this afternoon, after I get my nap, uh, and, and, and join us, and we hope that the fans will all be there too. I'm, <laughs> well, you can come anytime you want. You have always been able to come anytime you want. General Fenton graduated in 1987. He told you a little bit of the things that he did. What he didn't tell you is no one knew where he was. For years, when we would get together, we'd say, okay, we heard about Nahara, we heard about this guy, we heard about that guy, we heard about Pearls. We, where's Fenton? What's he doing? Oh, he's sneaking around doing something. We, we don't know where he is. Well, all of a sudden, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, he pops up at my tailgater because one of his friends uh, from Flanner Hall had an annual tailgater. Brian was there for the tailgater, and Don was with him. We hadn't met Don at that time, and he, Chris brought them over, and that was the beginning of a rekindling of a great friendship. I will tell you one story, and then I'll shut up and go on to my prepared remarks. If you want to know what kind of a person General Brian Fenton is, my wife's testimony is the best one that I know. Not only did he say and Don say that they were entrusting us with the care and, and feeding of their two daughters, <laughs> but when he came by one day and I ran into him on campus and he said, can we get a cup of coffee sometime? I said, hey, come on, we'll come out to the house and get a cup of coffee, but I need to square it with Lon first because we all know you don't bring home guests without making sure your wife says it's okay. And this is especially true in my case, and especially because the house was totally torn up with a new floor being put in. So I called Lon and said, I wanna bring somebody home. She said, you know what the house, I know what it looks like, but it's Brian. Oh, sure. Yeah, he can come by for a cup of coffee. Well, he didn't come by for a cup of coffee. He came by for a full home-cooked breakfast. We sat around the table for almost two hours. Uh, and, uh, and that's where our friendship really, really started to blossom. We followed the Fentons ever since that time. We met John and Kathleen. We met Chris. Of course, the girls, we, we, we have had lots of time with them. Uh, I don't know a better person. I will tell you that if there are smiles in heaven, and I know there are, Father Sampson is one of, the, one of the people who's wearing one of those smiles right now, looking down and knowing that you are carrying on his legacy. Uh, and I, I can't think of a higher compliment than that. So I should shut up. But now let's please take a minute, please pray with me. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. 
Gracious and loving God, thank you for guiding our friend Brian Fenton to the University of Notre Dame almost 40 years ago and for starting him on the path that has led us all to this point today. As we honor General Fenton with the Notre Dame Alumni Association's Corby Award, we thank you for lighting his path as you led him in service to God, country, and Notre Dame. You have blessed Brian with the nurturing of his parents, John and Kathleen, with the steadfast support of his wife, Dawn, and with the love of his brother, Chris, and his daughters, Nora and Cece. His life and his service testify to your grace. We thank you especially, Lord, for the blessing of being able to call this family our friends. We pray that you will continue to hold the Fenton family, the soldiers he leads in our defense around the world, and all who come to you in prayer safe from harm. And in the words of the old Irish blessing, you can join me if you want, may the road rise to meet us, may the wind be always at our backs, may the sunshine warm upon our faces and the rains fall soft upon our fields. And until we meet again, may God hold us in the palm of his hand. Amen.